every day. Okay, it's my pleasure to welcome everybody and to open this third webinar from our series Talk at Home. No, I'm waiting for the interpreter, Jana, to join us. Just a moment. Mbak Yana boleh dicoba lagi audionya. Karena tadi tidak terdengar ya audionya Mbak Yana. Hello. Okay. Eka, is it okay with you if I start and you'll begin interpreting for us, please? Yeah. Sure. Mbak Yana juga bisa dicoba tanpa headset. Yeah. Okay, Dona. Hello. Oh, yeah. Yana is... Oh, yes, Yana. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Senang sekali okay. bisa berjumpa lagi di acara webinar seri ketiga Berbicara di Rumah. I hope we find everybody well and doing okay in these very uncertain times that we live in. Semoga semua dalam keadaan baik, di, khususnya di kondisi yang serba tidak pasti ini. So first of all, welcome back to everybody who's joined us before. And to those of you who are new, it's lovely to see you with us. Saya ucapkan selamat datang kembali bagi para peserta yang sudah mengikuti dari yang sebelumnya ya. Dan juga selamat datang bagi Anda yang baru mendaftar hari ini. So in our webinar today, we're going to focus on ways in which we can help your child talk. Di webinar ketiga ini, kita fokus pada topik untuk membantu anak berbicara. You'll notice that for this webinar, your microphones have been muted. That's just so that we don't get any extraneous background noise coming in. Sepanjang webinar ini, Anda mungkin menyadari bahwa mikrofon Anda dimatikan agar uh, perjalanan presentasi nanti bisa berjalan lancar dan tidak terganggu. But we would love it if you would talk to us. So you're very welcome to use the chat function to do so. And you can use either English or Bahasa Indonesia to do so. Yeah, tapi kami senang bisa berbincang-bincang lewat kolom chat. Jadi silahkan diketikkan di sana dan boleh pakai Bahasa Indonesia atau Bahasa Inggris. Today, um, I'm going to be joined by my colleague Rebecca Claridge. Hari ini saya akan ditemani oleh kolega saya Rebecca Claridge. Rebecca, could you introduce yourself? Sure. Selamat siang sekali lagi. Nama saya Rebecca Claridge. I'm a speech language pathologist and certified auditory verbal therapist. And I've been coming to Indonesia now for about four years. Ya, latar belakang profesi saya adalah terapis wicara dan bahasa dan juga terapis auditory verbal bersertifikat. Saya telah berkunjung bekerja sama di Indonesia selama 4 tahun. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Donna Sporandio. I'm a teacher of the deaf and a certified auditory verbal therapist. Yang belum mengenal saya, nama saya Dona Sperandio. Latar belakang profesi saya adalah guru untuk siswa tunarungu dan juga terapis auditory verbal bersertifikat. And I'm lucky enough to have been coming to Indonesia to visit the RSI Center for about the last seven years. Dan saya senang sekali sudah bekerja sama dengan RSI Center selama tujuh tahun. 
We'll also be joined today by our interpreter, Yana Nahria. Dan juga akan diterjemahkan oleh saya, Yana Nahria. Yana is an auditory verbal practitioner at the RSI Center. Saya adalah praktisi auditory verbal di RSI Center. And we'll also be joined by our colleague Eka Hikmat. Dan juga bergabung bersama kita yaitu Eka Hikmat. Eka is the executive director at the RSI Center and a practicing auditory verbal practitioner. Eka adalah Direktur Eksekutif RSI Center dan juga praktisi auditory verbal. Okay, so let's get started. Oke, okay, kita mulai. Today we're going to start with a revision of the things that we've discussed so far. Hari ini kita akan melihat apa saja sih yang sudah kita diskusikan sejauh ini. Then we'll look at four specific strategies to help your child with their talking. Lalu kita akan melihat strategi-strategi yang bisa membantu anak untuk berbicara. And we're going to finish our series of webinars with a wonderful interview that Rebecca has recorded with um, Linnea. Linnea is a 19-year-old cochlear implant recipient from Florida in the US. Yang terakhir yaitu wawancara uh, Rebecca dan seorang pengguna implant rumah siput bernama Linnea. So Rebecca, uh, Linnea is going to answer some questions about what it was like growing up as a young deaf person. So I hope you'll stay with us to hear the interview. Linnea akan menceritakan bagaimana perjalanan hidupnya dan tumbuh besar dengan uh, implant rumah siputnya. Nanti kita lihat ya. So let's start with just a little bit of revision. Kita lihat untuk revisi. You will remember that we've looked at this picture before. Kalau Anda ingat, Anda pernah melihat gambar ini. It tells us that if we want our child to be able to talk, they need to begin with good hearing. Kalau ingin anak bisa berbicara, syarat pertamanya adalah anak harus bisa mendengar. Hearing leads on to listening which then leads to talking. Mendengar akan mengarah kepada menyimak dan menyimak akan mengarah ke berbicara. So today we're going to be focusing on the aspect of talking. Sekarang kita akan fokus ke aspek berbicara. But again, I do want you to remember that hearing is the most important part that your child needs in order to be able to progress through these steps. Tapi sekali lagi diingatkan bahwa faktor dari anak harus bisa mendengar, mendengar itu harus diperhatikan. Now we know that some of your children were either born with or developed a significant hearing loss. Saya mengerti mungkin ada beberapa yang Anaknya mendapatkan gangguan pendengaran sejak lahir, tapi ada juga yang mendapatkan seiring bertambahnya usia. But do remember that Medel and Hear Life have a range of excellent technology that can help your child to hear the best possible signal. Tapi untuk uh, masalah tersebut, Medel dan Hear Life bisa menyediakan fasilitas atau alat pendengaran yang sesuai dengan kebutuhan anak Anda. Uh, as always, at the end of the webinar, we will provide you with an email address so that you can contact us for further information. Seperti biasa, di akhir webinar ini, Anda bisa mendapatkan email di mana Anda bisa mengkontak kami di sana. We've had lots of emails from people. Um, we hope we've answered most of them. Some people are still waiting. We will get to you soon. Ya, kami telah mendapatkan banyak email yang lalu. Lalu kita uh, juga sudah menjawab pertanyaan-pertanyaan tersebut. Bagi yang belum terjawab pertanyaannya, tenang saja nanti akan kami respon. Okay, so these are the four strategies we're going to look at today. 
Baiklah, inilah strategi strategi yang akan kita bahas hari ini. So let's get started. Mari kita mulai. Our first strategy is called wait, wait, wait. Strategi yang pertama bernama tunggu, tunggu, tunggu. Now we've spent lots of time talking to you during the webinars about the need to talk to your child a lot. Ya, kita sudah membahas di webinar yang lalu bahwa kita harus bicara banyak. Today, I want to remind you that to help your child listen clearly, it's best if one person is talking to them at a time. Hari ini saya ingin menggarisbawahi bahwa agar anak bisa mendengar dengan jelas ucapan seseorang, jadi kita harus berbicara bergantian, satu orang bicara di satu waktu. So we encourage you to have one person talking to your child at a time. Then we also want you to wait, leave some silence so that there is a chance for your child to have their turn to join in. Setelah tadi satu orang berbicara di satu waktu, lalu tunggu, berikan keheningan agar kita bisa mendapatkan respon dari si anak. So make sure you keep on with lots of talking, but tonight we're going to introduce the idea that you will also stop and leave some silence. Jadi penting untuk kita berbicara banyak dengan anak, tapi jangan lupa berikan waktu tunggu bagi anak untuk merespon. Eka is going to show you what that might look like. Thanks, Eka. Silakan, Eka. Lihat, ada ikan. Swish, swish, swish. Ikannya berenang. Lovely, thanks, Eka. Bagus sekali, terima kasih, Eka. So I hope you saw the way that Eka spent some lovely time talking to the child with nice acoustic highlighting that you've learned about. And then she stopped. She gave a time of silence. Yeah. Tadi Anda lihat bagaimana Eka sudah memperagakan untuk berbicara banyak, menggunakan penonjolan akustik, dan juga Eka memberikan keheningan, memberikan waktu tunggu agar anak mau merespon. You'll also notice that when she stopped, she gave an expectant look. She smiled at the child, she leaned forward, and she looked as if to say, come on, it's your turn to talk now. Tadi mungkin Anda perhatikan, saat menunggu anak, Eka memberikan tatapan berharap. Dia tersenyum, membungkuk sedikit, lalu dia menatap anak. This will really encourage your child to get the idea that it's their turn now to say something. Ya, ini untuk memberikan ide kepada anak konsep bahwa ini giliran dia untuk berbicara. But I do want you to remember that it's really important for one person to be talking at a time. We don't want lots and lots of talking. We don't want to see this purple part up here where all the voices muddle together. No, we want to see nice, clear examples of one person talking at a time. Yeah, tapi harus ingat satu orang berbicara di satu waktu. Kita tidak ingin ada banyak orang berbicara secara bersamaan. Jadi yang area berwarna ungu itu berbicara bersamaan kita tidak ingin itu ya. Our next strategy is called auditory closure. Strategi yang berikutnya berjudul auditory closure. Let me show you what that looks like. Saya perlihatkan contohnya. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear everyone. Happy birthday to... 
You. <laughs> Fabulous. You can see go. there that what we did was I began singing. Then I stopped <clears throat> and I gave a chance for everybody to say the next piece. Yeah. Anda tadi lihat saya menyanyikan bagian pertama dari lagu Kemudian orang lain akan melengkapi bagian akhir dari lagu tersebut. You can see how this fits in with our previous strategy. We're singing, then we stop and wait for the child to join in. Anda lihat kaitannya dengan strategi yang sebelumnya. Jadi setelah menyanyi, kita berikan waktu tunggu. Kemudian anak yang melengkapi bagian yang belum diucapkan. Now I'm going to ask Eka to give us another example. Thanks, Eka. Silakan contohnya, Eka. Ayo naik. Ayo naik. Ayo turun. Ayo naik. Ayo naik. Ayo turun. Ayo naik, ayo naik, ayo turun. Super, I hope you can see the way that this works to encourage a child to talk. Ya, semoga cara ini bisa membantu anak Anda untuk uh, berbicara. Now do remember that the first important part is to spend lots of time teaching the song or rhyme or phrase. You need many, many repetitions before you expect the child to join in. Sebelum kita menerapkan strategi ini, yang harus dilakukan adalah kita memberikan banyak sekali atau mengajarkan banyak sekali lagu, rima, frase, atau kalimat familiar. Jadi banyak ada pengulangan dari lagu atau frasa tersebut. It can be useful to show the child what to do by having somebody else in the family join in with the second part. Yeah. Lebih mudah bagi anak kalau kita memperagakannya dengan orang dewasa yang lain. Jadi dia jadi tahu apa yang harus dilakukan. So after lots of teaching and lots of repetitions, then you have a go to sing or say the first part and wait, wait, wait for your child to maybe join in with the next part. Yeah. Jadi setelah kita ajarkan berkali-kali, kita ulang sebuah lagu atau sebuah frase, nah kita boleh mengucapkan bagian pertamanya, kemudian tunggu, tunggu, tunggu untuk memberikan kesempatan anak melengkapinya. Okay, now I'm going to hand over to Rebecca and she's going to talk to you about our next two key strategies. Sekarang saya berikan ke Rebecca untuk menjelaskan strategi yang lain. Okay, thanks Donna. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, kita lihat di layar. So, uh, I'm going to talk about our final two strategies for our uh, series Talk at Home. Saya akan membahas dua strategi terakhir dari webinar ini di rumah. These are use choices and expansion and extension. Yaitu pertama gunakan pilihan, yang kedua perluasan dan perpanjangan. So let's make a start with use choices. Sekarang kita mulai dengan gunakan pilihan. In our first series, I made a bit of a fuss about asking too many questions. Di webinar yang lalu, saya pernah membahas uh, kalau kita tidak ingin kita mengajukan banyak pertanyaan. I said, asking lots of questions, particularly in those early years when your child has just started to learn to listen, is not helpful. Saya sudah menjelaskan bahwa dengan memberikan pertanyaan, banyak pertanyaan ke anak, khususnya bagi anak-anak di tahun-tahun pertama dia mendengar, itu tidak berguna. Questions like, what's that? How many is that? Who is this? They test your child at a time when your child needs you to be their teacher, not tester. Pertanyaan-pertanyaan semacam apa ini, siapa itu, berapa banyak, gitu. Itu jenis-jenis pertanyaan 
yang mengetes anak. Kita diharapkan bisa menjadi guru, mengajarkan memberi contoh ke anak, bukan sebagai pengetes. But um, our next strategy is actually about using a particular type of question that will give your child a choice. Yeah. Strategi yang ini sebenarnya adalah salah satu jenis pertanyaan. Bedanya adalah kita memberikan pertanyaan dengan pilihan. So these um, the choice questions provide a language model for your child to listen to and then they can repeat the words. It's much easier than an open question. Ya, yeah. dengan menggunakan pilihan ini anak akan mendengarkan kata yang harus dia tiru atau ucapkan. Jadi lebih mudah bagi anak daripada kita memberikan pertanyaan terbuka. So you can start using choice questions as soon as your child begins to use their voice deliberately. Jadi Anda bisa menggunakan strategi gunakan pilihan apabila anak sudah mulai menggunakan kata-katanya. We don't have to wait for those first words to sound perfect. Kita tidak perlu menunggu sampai anak bisa mengucapkan kata-kata dengan jelas. There's a trick to using choice questions. If you kind of know which one your child wants, you can put the one that they want second in the choice. Ya. Kita bisa mengira-ngira misalnya kita tahu anak menginginkan sesuatu. Nah, itu jadikan benda itu atau objek itu di pilihan kedua. Jadi lebih mudah bagi dia untuk mengingat kata itu. Remember when we talked about acoustic highlighting? One of those techniques is to put the important word last. That's because it's the easiest place for children to attend to a word and remember it. Masih ingat dengan strategi penonjolan akustik? Jadi di situ kita meletakkan kata kunci yang ingin kita ajarkan di akhir kalimat atau frase. Kenapa? Karena yang ter, uh, tersebut terakhir itu yang paling diingat oleh anak pada umumnya. If your child is a more experienced listener, well, you might like to challenge them and put the one you think they want first in the choice. Ya, tapi bagi anak yang sudah mahir atau level bahasanya lebih tinggi, Anda bisa memberikan tantangan buat dia. Jadi dengan cara objek yang dia inginkan, letakkan di uh, pilihan pertama. Jadi dia harus mengingat yang pilihan kedua. This is how we're going to do use choice, but I thought it might be more fun if I showed you. Beginilah cara menggunakan strategi gunakan pilihan, tapi lebih enaknya kayaknya diperagakan saja ya. All right, so uh, let me see. I'm hoping you, I can't see myself, so I'm hoping you can see us. Can you see yes, us? Yes, that's good, Rebecca. Okay, okay, can I, I can see myself now. Okay, so here we have it. Okay. Kita lihat. Oh, Bella, do you want the orange or the apple? Oh, I think you want the apple. Oh, here's the apple. So there you could see Bella didn't use her voice yet, but I gave her plenty of time, some wait time. Yeah. Mungkin Anda tadi bisa lihat bahwa Bella belum mengucapkan kata apel. Saya memberikan waktu tunggu, banyak kesempatan untuk uh, dia merespon. Then I made a guess about which one I thought she wanted. Lalu saya mengira-ngira kira-kira apa nih yang Bella inginkan. <tuh> And I repeated the language. Dan saya mengulang bahasanya. And I waited once more to give her a chance to try and say the word. Ya, yeah, lalu saya menunggu sekali lagi, baru setelah itu saya berikan bahasanya. And yet Bella is not quite ready to use her voice, but I'm going to keep trying that until she is. Ternyata Bella juga belum mengeluarkan nih suaranya, tapi saya akan terus berusaha sampai dia bisa berusaha mengucapkan kata tersebut. Oops, oops, sorry, I'll just this one. So using choice questions is a really great, great way to encourage your child to communicate. 
Jadi strategi gunakan pilani ini bagus sekali ya untuk mendorong anak berkomunikasi. Because they hear the words just before they try and say them, it takes a lot of pressure off them. Ya, yeah. jadi anak diberi kesempatan untuk mendengar kata atau bahasa yang ingin kita dia tirukan gitu. Jadi uh, mengurangi stres atau tekanan di dia. Another great thing about using choice questions is it teaches children to make decisions. Yang menarik dari strategi ini adalah kita memberikan anak kesempatan untuk membuat keputusan. And when they do, they quickly learn the power of using their voice because they get what they want. Ya, yeah. begitu anak memahami konsep, oh ini saya diberikan kesempatan untuk membuat keputusan. Ketika hal itu sudah terjadi, kita bisa memberikan bahasanya ke anak dan anak bisa tahu bahwa dengan suaranya itu mempunyai kekuatan untuk mendapatkan apa yang dia inginkan. I'm going to ask Eka to show us how to use choice questions with children of different levels of ability. Sekarang Eka akan memperagakan penerapan strategi gunakan pilihan dari berbagai level. Oke, okay. jadi kalau kita mengharapkan anak menjawab dengan kata-kata tunggal, ini yang kita pilihan ini ya yang kita akan berikan. Apakah kamu mau pakai sendok atau garpu? Tapi kalau anaknya sudah lebih advance bahasanya lebih maju, kita bisa misalnya harapkan dia menjawab dengan dua kata, maka pilihannya pun kita seperti ini. Apakah kamu mau pakai sendok besar atau sendok kecil? Atau kalau sudah lebih maju lagi tingkat bahasanya, kita bisa tanyakan, kamu mau naik ayunan di taman atau mau main ke rumah nenek? Great, thanks Eka. I could really hear you increasing the number of words that you're expecting the child to say on each side of the choice. Terima kasih Eka. Tadi saya bisa mendengar dengan jelas bahwa uh, Eka sudah menambahkan kata-kata sesuai dengan tingkat kemampuan bahasa anak. Rebecca, there is a question. How yes, to I move a something. child? How to move a child from a play sound or early learning to listen sounds to words? Ada yang bertanya bagaimana cara meningkatkan kemampuan anak dari tadinya hanya menggunakan bunyi belajar mendengar atau bunyi bermain ke kata-kata nyata ini. Oh, that's a great question, Eka, and it's one that troubles a lot of families. Itu pertanyaan yang sangat bagus dan terjadi ya kasus-kasus ini di beberapa keluarga. Because it can be so exciting when you first see your child understanding those play sounds and beginning to use the play sounds. Ya, karena senang sekali ya saat mengetahui bahwa anak bisa paham bunyi bermain atau bunyi belajar mendengar dan juga mengucapkan bunyi tersebut. And that excitement makes it a bit hard to leave those play sounds behind. Karena kita senang sekali dengan perkembangan itu, kadang sulit juga untuk pindah atau beralih ke level yang berikutnya. So what we need to do is pair the play sound with the name of the um, animal or the transport or the real vocabulary. Ya, caranya adalah kita pasangkan bunyi belajar mendengar itu dengan kata yang sesungguhnya, baik itu hewan ataupun kendaraan. And use the the label of the say the cow more often than the play sound. Jadi gunakan kata sebenarnya yaitu misalnya sapi lebih banyak kita mengucapkan kata sapi ketimbang bunyinya. And then we might leave a long pause between cow and moo. Yeah. Kita juga bisa berikan jeda antara mengucapkan sapi dan juga bunyinya mu. And then we can just be left with the cow and mu is behind. Lama-lama kita ucapkan kata sapi tapi kita meninggalkan bunyinya. Kita tidak ucapkan lagi bunyinya. I hope that answered the question. 
semoga bisa menjawab pertanyaan tadi ya. Do you have any other comments on that topic, Donna? Apakah ada komentar dari Donna? No, but I think the Donna, you're muted. Uh, your yep. audio. I think there might be a further question about it on the chat. Okay, let me look. Sepertinya ada pertanyaan lebih lanjut tentang itu di kolom. So there is, yeah, there is another question. Uh, there is a parent face a dilemma. Uh, in one side, she wants to increase her child vocabularies, but uh, at the other side, she is afraid that the child will uh, con will be confused. There are too many words and we will forget all the words. Jadi ada pertanyaan juga dari uh, so, orang tua yang mengalami dilema. Di satu sisi ingin terus menambah kosa kata anaknya, tapi uh, beliau juga takut ya kalau misalnya terus menerus memberikan kata-kata baru, khawatir anaknya bingung dan cepat lupa. Would you like Rebecca, to answer could, that one, Donna? Sure. Can you stop sharing your screen for me for a minute? I can. Yeah, sure. So I think the first thing to say is don't worry that your child will forget the words. Do, we do want to expose them to lots and lots of vocabulary. Pertama, jangan khawatir kalau kita memberikan banyak kosakata, anak akan bingung atau tidak karena memang anak perlu banyak dikenalkan kosakata, banyak kosakata. But what we aim to do is to give the child the input that is just a step ahead of what they are already using. Ya, tapi kita ingin memberikan uh, masukan atau input kepada anak dari apa yang dia sudah bisa. So if your child is using single words, perhaps they say mama and sleep. Then you're going to give a short phrase that's a little bit longer than that each time. Oh, here's mama. It's time to sleep. Bye bye mama. So our language that we deliver is a little bit of just one step above what the child is already using. Ya, yeah, jadi misalkan anak baru bisa mengucapkan satu-satu kata. Misalnya baru bisa mengucapkan mama atau bobo. Nah, dari kemampuannya dia itu kita tingkatkan levelnya, kita tambahkan satu kata lagi. Jadi misalnya dadah mama, ini dia mama. Atau sekarang waktunya bobo. Jadi kita meningkatkan level bahasa yang sudah dia kuasai. And Rebecca is going to talk to us some more about this in the webinar. Today. Dan Rebecca akan membahasnya lagi hari ini. There is one okay. more question if you Yes, let's do that. Let's do the question now before we go on. So, uh, this parent shared that during therapy sessions, uh, her child usually uh, wanted to imitate or to say uh, things spontaneously but not so much at home. Jadi ada yang bertanya kalau saat sesi terapi mau mengulang, mau mengatakan sesuatu tapi ketika di rumah tidak begitu ingin mengulang atau uh, menyebutkan kata-kata yang sebetulnya sudah dikuasai. Well, that's a fairly difficult question to answer because we don't know um, what's happening at home. But I guess I'd encourage you to think about all of the strategies that we've talked about and bringing them into your home environment. So it might just be something as simple as thinking about the background noise in your home, making sure that you are close in your home, providing those language models with acoustic highlighting and waiting. Your thoughts, Donna? Oh, sorry, Yana. <laughs> Oke, okay. jadi uh, itu sebenarnya pertanyaan yang sulit untuk dijawab ya, karena kita tidak tahu kondisi di rumah uh, Anda seperti apa, tapi mungkin yang bisa Anda lakukan adalah mempelajari lagi strategi-strategi yang sudah kita bahas di webinar yang lalu. Bisa jadi faktornya adalah hal-hal seder sesederhana, misalnya mungkin suara bising yang ada di sekitar dikurangi, lalu juga kita mendekat ke anak, bicara banyak, lalu berikan waktu tunggu, semacam itu. Yes, and I'd encourage you to look very carefully at what is happening in the therapy session that seems to be working. Ya, mungkin Anda bisa perhatikan lagi nanti ketika di sesi terapi, 
apa ya yang bisa menyebabkan uh, anak saya tertarik atau mau meniru dengan sukarela atau me- spontan mengucapkan kata kira-kira faktor apa nih yang bisa membuat dia termotivasi If you ask your therapist permission, she might let you video the session. Then you can look back and see when were the times that your child said a lot and what situation were they in when that happened. Then perhaps you can try and do more of that in your home. Ya, yeah. kalau diizinkan boleh direkam aktivitas di dalam sesi terapi. Lalu di rumah dilihat lagi rekamannya, jadi kira-kira aktivitas atau kondisi seperti apa sih yang bisa membuat anak saya tuh senang dan mengucapkan banyak kata di aktivitas tersebut. Mungkin bisa Anda tiru uh, dengan hal yang sama di rumah. Oke, okay. let's pop back to our PowerPoint then, because there is a job for you now. Sekarang kita kembali ke PowerPoint karena ada tugas untuk Anda. So what I want you to do now is think about your child and their level of ability and type in chat some choice questions that you will use to try and bring out from them the best possible language. Tugas Anda sekarang silakan pikirkan tentang anak Anda masing-masing. Lalu pikirkan lagi kira-kira ada di level apa nih bahasa mereka. Kemudian berikan contoh pertanyaan pilihan untuk anak Anda. Perhatikan level bahasanya, lalu pertanyaan pilihan seperti apa sih yang akan Anda gunakan kepada anak Anda. Silakan diketik di kolom chat. So we're after those choice questions that will have the maximum number of words your child can put together on each side of the choice. Yeah. Jadi kalau level bahasa anak Anda sudah mulai menggabung-gabungkan kata, maka berikan pilihannya itu dalam bentuk gabungan kata juga, baik di pilihan pertama maupun pilihan kedua. Or, we, or if we think about the question that we had about how do we move a child from play sounds to the Um, actual vocabulary this is a way you could do it instead of saying do you want to play with the moo or the quack quack do you want to play with the cow or the duck ya ini bagus juga kalau misalnya tadi ingin beralih dari bunyi-bunyian bermain ke kata yang sebenarnya jadi daripada kita berikan pilihan kamu mau main moo atau quack 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 kita tinggalkan itu kita berikan pilihan kamu mau sapi atau bebek. Yeah, We silakan. have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. Eka? There's a one comment. So, uh, for example, would you like to eat rice or drink milk? Apakah mau minum susu atau mau makan nasi? Oh, I really like that choice question because there's a combination of a verb and then the uh, the object on both sides of the choice. Ya, itu bagus sekali contohnya karena mengkombinasikan antara kata kerja dan kata benda di masing-masing pilihan. Oke, okay, one more. Why do you like painting more than exercising? Uh, jadi ada yang bertanya, kenapa kamu lebih suka melukis daripada berolahraga? You want to do some painting or exercising. Great, and I like the way that these choices are focusing on verbs, actions, action words. Yeah. Yeah, saya But, senang uh, sekali dengan dengan contoh ini karena fokus ke kata kerja. So actually it, it is a question why? Why do you like? Why do you prefer uh, painting than exercising? All right. I'm not sure that's quite a choice question. It's a very difficult question to answer actually because uh, it's a very broad response. Choice questions are providing the language for a child to copy. For a child to answer this question, they must have very high level language. Yeah. Kalau tadi pertanyaannya ada kata kenapa, itu jawabannya sangat luas ya. Uh, itu bukan yang kita apa contohkan. Strategi gunakan pilihan ini, kita ingin memberikan contoh ke anak uh, bahasa apa yang harus mereka gunakan atau mereka tiru. There are some other choice ones there. I can see because I can see the word atau. 
<laughs> which I know is or. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Do you want uh, to wear red shirt or blue shirt? Great. So <laughs> to be Jadi ada yang bertanya, misalnya ya pertanyaannya adalah, kamu mau pakai baju biru atau baju merah? So to use choice questions effectively, you're going to have the word or in the question. Ya, jadi untuk menggunakan strategi ini, Anda harus menyediakan kata apa yang harus anak tiru. And in this way, you, are, you can be sure that you're providing the language that you're going to expect your child to copy. Ya, dengan begini kita bisa yakin uh, anak bisa meniru bahasa yang kita targetkan. We're going to have a look now at the resource. Sekarang kita lihat media, media belajar. So like previous weeks you're going to receive it as a PDF and also a slide deck. Seperti yang webinar lalu Anda akan mendapatkan media belajar format PDF dan slide deck. So this PDF is a book about a house, rooms of a house and things you will find in a house. Ya, jadi di format PDF ini yang akan menjadikan buku berisi tentang temanya adalah rumah dan di sana ada objek-objek yang biasa ditemukan di rumah. What I like about this book is it gives us a chance to focus on verbs, action words. Yang saya suka dengan buku ini adalah kita bisa lebih fokus ke kata-kata kerja atau kata-kata aksi. Sometimes it's easier for us to be teaching our children the names of objects, like here's a house and here's a bear. Ya, kadang memang lebih mudah kalau kita langsung menyebutkan nama-nama benda, kata benda ya, ini rumah, ini boneka. Oh, we talk about colors. The house is pink, the bear is brown. Ya, mungkin lebih mudah juga kalau kita menyebutkan warna. Rumahnya atapnya warna pink, beruangnya warna coklat. Oh, we count things. Oh, let's see the stairs. One, two, three. Atau mungkin lebih mudah bagi kita untuk mengucapkan angka. Ayo kita hitung, ada berapa anak tangganya? Satu, dua, tiga. And we forget about these action words because they're a little bit harder to point out in a book. Ya, tapi kita melupakan kata kerja karena memang untuk uh, buku kita agak sulit ya untuk menunjukkan bagaimana sih kita mengajarkan kata kerja. So when you're using this resource, I'd encourage you to focus on the action words like the boy is cuddling the bear. Ya. Jadi saya ingin Anda fokus pada kata kerja jika menggunakan buku ini. Contohnya, oh lihat anak laki-laki itu peluk boneka. I'm going to ask Eka to read the first few pages of the slide deck with you and demonstrate how you can use the um, strategies that we've been talking about today. Ya, jadi Eka akan memperlihatkan contoh menggunakan slide deck media ini dan juga menggunakan strategi yang sudah dibahas tadi. Ya. Rumahku. Rumahku mempunyai pintu depan besar untuk diketuk. Yang berikutnya Ibu Bapak jawab ya di chat box. Rumahku mempunyai lorong sempit panjang untuk berlari atau memasang foto. Silakan dijawab di kolom chat. For running untuk berlari. Oh iya betul. <laughs> ya. <laughs> betul sekali berlari. Oh ada yang jawab juga memasang foto. Rumahku mempunyai dapur yang penuh dengan benda-benda berkilau untuk hmm. cooking, masak. Oh, betul. Tebakan betul ibu. sekali. Thank you, Eka. I could see and hear you using a number of strategies. Terima kasih, Eka. Saya bisa lihat 
Anda tadi mempraktekkan beberapa strategi. I noticed you using choices. Saya tahu tadi Anda menggunakan gunakan pilihan. I noticed acoustic highlighting. Aku dengar tadi ada penonjolan akustik. And I noticed using wait time to achieve auditory closure. Dan juga tadi ada waktu tunggu agar anak bisa atau Bapak Ibu melengkapi jawabannya. Okay, our final strategy expansion and extension. Oke, okay, strategi yang terakhir yaitu perluasan dan perpanjangan. Expansion and extension are the strategies we use to show children how to improve on what they just said. Ya. Yeah. Jadi dengan strategi ini kita ingin um, meningkatkan kemampuan anak dalam bahasanya. Expansion is what we are doing when we model a more grammatically complete sentence. Dengan perluasan kita ingin uh, anak mendapatkan contoh kalimat yang lengkap dan benar secara tata bahasa. Is an example. Ini contohnya. Or we might model how to produce a, a speech sound correctly. Atau bisa juga kita ingin mengoreksi bunyi huruf tertentu. Extension is the process of modeling how to add an extra idea to what the child says. Perpanjangan artinya adalah kita menambahkan ide baru atau ide uh, tambahan dari apa yang anak sudah ucapkan. So here's an example. If the child says dog, you might add another idea. The dog is running. Ya, yeah. mungkin anak mengucapkan anjing, lalu kita berikan tambahannya yaitu anjing berlari. Expansion and extension is a nice way for you to fix mistakes that your child makes as they're learning to talk. Ya, jadi dengan strategi perluasan dan perpanjangan kita bisa memperbaiki atau uh, memberikan contoh susunan kata yang benar, kalimat yang benar kepada anak. And it shows your child an easy pathway to more advanced language. Dan ini bisa memberikan uh, cara yang mudah bagi anak untuk meningkatkan tingkat kemampuan bahasanya. Eka and I are going to show you a couple of examples of expansion and extension, and then you can have a go. Sekarang kita peragakan strategi perluasan dan perpanjangan. Selanjutnya giliran anda. Ada ikan. Aku lihat itu. Aku lihat ikan. Ah, ada ikan. Aku punya anjing. Oh iya, kamu punya dua anjing. Aku punya dua anjing. Oke, okay, now it's your turn. Nah, sekarang giliran Bapak Ibu. Type in chat. If you if you hear your child say mama, What is going to be your expansion and extension in reply? Kalau misalnya anak mengucapkan mama, nah kira-kira apa nih perluasan dan perpanjangan dari ucapan anak itu? Silakan diketik. Yes, mom is here. Yeah, mama di sini. Yes, mom is in the kitchen. Yeah, mama di dapur. Yes, mom is cooking. Ya, yeah, mama sedang memasak. Wonderful, everyone's got the hang of that. Terrific. <laughs> Bagus sekali ya, semuanya bisa menjawabnya. So here's a little bit harder one for you. Sekarang ini lebih sulit. Silakan. You hear your child say, uh, there's a, a bear book. What's your expansion and extension? Nah, misalnya anak Anda mengucapkan buku beruang. Nah, perluasan dan perpanjangannya seperti apa? Silakan diketik di chat. 
This is a storybook about a bear. Ini adalah buku cerita tentang beruang. Oh, you are reading a book about a bear. Oh, kamu sedang membaca buku tentang beruang. Oh, yes, there is a, a bear in the book. A big bear in the book. Ya, yeah, ada beruang yang sangat besar di dalam buku. The bear is living in the forest. Oh, beruangnya ternyata tinggal di hutan. Lovely. I love the way everyone's taken that small idea and expanded it. Well done. Ya, yeah, bagus sekali. Saya suka banget dengan ide-ide untuk uh, memanjangkan atau meluaskan ucapan anak. I feel very confident that you'll be able to take this strategy and use it with your children. Saya yakin sekali, saya percaya diri, Bapak Ibu bisa mempraktekkan strategi ini. There is a little trick to it and that is don't make your expansion and extension too long. Ada satu trik untuk uh, strategi ini, tipsnya adalah jangan berikan anak uh, perpanjangan atau perluasan yang terlalu besar ya, terlalu panjang. Keep it just one or two more words longer than your child can say. Cukup tambahkan satu sampai dua kata dari ucapan anak. All right. Uh, now I'm very excited to share with you this interview with Linnea. Sekarang saya senang sekali ingin memperlihatkan wawancara saya dengan Linnea. Rebecca, excuse me. Yes. Before that, can we uh, answer some questions? Sure. So many fathers ask questions here. Jadi ada beberapa ayah ya yang bertanya di sini. Saya ingin menghargai mereka dan kita akan menjawab beberapa pertanyaan. So uh, one of them ask uh, how to increase uh, auditory memory uh, from one to two and from two to three because uh, the child keep forgetting one of the, uh, the items. And the other ask uh, during conversation. Usually uh, the child is not so clear in speaking, but if he reads a book, uh, he's uh, more fluent in, in uh, the articulation. Jadi ada yang bertanya, bagaimana cara meningkatkan dari satu item auditory memory ke dua atau dari dua ke tiga. Lalu juga ada yang bertanya, kalau misalnya ketika membaca, kok artikulasi lebih jelas, tapi ketika bercakap-cakap, kok kurang jelas ya artikulasinya. Okay, right, shall I answer the first one? Well, yes, there was a big question, though. I was going to suggest we might actually tackle the topic of auditory memory in a different webinar. It's a big topic. But please, go ahead, Donna, you do your best. <laughs> yeah, ini sebenarnya topik yang sangat besar. Seharusnya ada seminar khusus tentang auditory memory, ya. Tapi silakan, Donna, menjawab pertanyaan ini. Well, I think, first of all, Rebecca, it would be nice to hear from everybody, wouldn't it, on the email address, what they might like us to do for them in the future. So please do feel free to use that email address and ask us what topics you'd like us to cover. And perhaps we can add some extra webinars in the future. I hope so. Ya, jadi silahkan. Oh, mungkin kalau ada dari Bapak Ibu yang ingin memberikan ide topik-topik apa nih yang bisa dibahas untuk webinar yang atau seminar yang berikutnya, silahkan ya. Semoga kami bisa menampung itu. But just two quick ideas to answer that question. Tapi ada dua ide untuk menjawab pertanyaan tadi. Firstly, um, make sure that you use items that your child knows really, really well. Okay. Pertama adalah kita bisa melatih menambahkan item auditory memory-nya dengan kosakata yang benar-benar anak sudah kuasai atau pahami. Secondly, Try items that go together kind of naturally. Like, for example, get your shoes and your socks. That will be an easy step towards that because they sort of go together naturally. Ya, jadi berikan contoh-contoh item yang natural. Seperti, ayo kita ambil sepatu dan kaos kaki. Itu kan berpasangan, jadi lebih mudah diingatnya oleh anak. And also, you can try, when you give the two items, whichever one the child missed, put some acoustic highlighting on it. So if they missed shoes, we would say, get your shoes and your socks. 
Jadi kalau kita ingin melatih dua item auditory memory, misalnya anak e, melupakan yang sepatu. Kita berikan penonjolan akustik di kata sepatu. Jadi ayo kita ambil sepatu dan kaos kaki. Okay, I've got I'm an sure. idea as well. Should, can I add one idea to that? Yeah, please. Um, so sometimes when we're trying to focus on building auditory memory, we end up testing our children a lot. Yeah. Kalau kita ingin melatih auditory memory anak, kita cenderung melakukan tes pada anak. So it might sound like this. Get the dog and the cat. Ya, yeah, misalnya... Uh, tolong ambil anjing dan kucing. Where's the train and the plane? Mana yang kereta dan pesawat? And children get very tired and also stressed of being tested this way. Dan anak menjadi stres atau uh, lelah gitu karena dites terus. So make sure you're teaching at that two item auditory memory level. Jadi pastikan Anda mengajar dulu, memberikan banyak contoh dulu dari dua item auditory memory. So when we're teaching at a two item auditory memory level, it sounds like this. Jadi kita um, harus memberikan contoh atau mengajarkan misalnya untuk dua item auditory memory. Oh, I love fruit. I love both oranges and bananas. Oranges and bananas. I love Oranges and bananas. Misalnya, kita lagi membahas buah. Oh, aku suka sekali makanan dan buah-buahan. Aku suka jeruk dan pisang. Iya, aku suka jeruk dan pisang. And shall we try the other part of the question? Yeah. So the chat is better when uh, reading. The articulation is better when reading. Uh, Then when having conversation. Jadi anak ini artikulasinya lebih bagus ketika membaca daripada ketika bercakap-cakap. Did you have something a comment yeah, on that? Sure. I, I think that's probably happening because they're using the letters to help them remember which sounds go with Uh, to help them remember which sounds are within that word. So they're seeing it in the sentence as well as hearing it. Mungkin bisa jadi faktornya adalah uh, anak melihat huruf-huruf yang ada di teks uh, di dalam buku. Jadi mengasosiasikan atau menghubungkan apa yang dia ucapkan sesuai dengan apa huruf yang dia lihat. This is a good thing. Because as time goes by, this child is likely to get clearer and clearer in their speech, supported by their reading. Ya, ini bagus sekali karena mungkin dengan aktivitas membaca buku, anak bisa mengembangkan kemampuan berbicaranya nanti di konteks yang lain. So if this is happening, keep reading to them lots. This is a good sign. Ya, kalau begitu tetap teruskan untuk membaca buku ya kegiatan membaca buku untuk memperbaiki ucapannya. But as I said at the start, do take this opportunity to get that email address and contact us with topics that you would like more information about and we can design some more webinars to help you. Dan silakan kalau ada ide topik lain yang ingin dibahas, kami akan menampungnya dan mudah-mudahan bisa kami kabulkan. One last question, please, Rebecca. <laughs> Can I just add something to the speech oh, okay. um, topic? Uh, it's much more difficult for children to think about the words that they want to say, think about how they're going to put them into a sentence and then say the sentence, than to read the sentence in front of them. Ya, jadi memang uh, ada kalanya anak ketika bercakap-cakap secara langsung dengan orang lain, dia me perlu memikirkan kata-kata apa yang akan dia gunakan lalu dia ucapkan. Ke uh, kalau dibandingkan dengan membaca buku, dia sudah lihat objeknya, gambarnya, dia lebih mudah untuk mengungkapkan apa yang dia ingin ucapkan. And you certainly don't want to correct every single word your child says. But if your child is reading, well that's fantastic. You could write the occasional word down and practice saying them clearly. Ya. 
Anda tidak perlu harus selalu mengoreksi uh, ucapan anak ya. Yang pasti kalau anak sudah bisa mulai membaca teks atau tulisan, itu bagus sekali. Anda bisa sesekali menuliskan satu kata baru, lalu melatih dia untuk uh, mengucapkan kata tersebut dengan benar. Okay. Now, Eka, I know there's one more question. I'm going to suggest that we watch the Linnea interview because okay. it's quite long. It's about 11 minutes. Oke, okay, kita sebelum menjawab pertanyaan yang selanjutnya, kita lebih baik menonton video Linnea dulu ya. But if we have time at the end, we'll be able to talk about a few more questions then. Jika nanti di akhir masih ada waktu, kita akan menjawab pertanyaan tersebut. So, um, this interview with Linnea was recorded specially for you, the parents in Indonesia. Jadi, wawancara ini dengan Linnea yang sudah direkam, ini dibuat khusus untuk uh, para peserta atau orang tua di Indonesia. So, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did when we were recording it. Semoga Anda menikmati video wawancara ini seperti saya waktu mewawancarai Linnea. Uh, when Donna and I won't interrupt while you're watching the video. Saya dan Donna tidak akan mengganggu Anda. Silahkan Anda menonton video ini. But I'd like to encourage you to add comments into the chat box and to um, ask any questions in there as well. Tapi sepanjang menonton video ini, silakan berikan komentar-komentar di kolom chat. Oke, okay, let's talk again in about 11 minutes. Ya, kita ketemu lagi 11 menit ke depan ya, karena durasi videonya 11 menit. Thanks for meeting with me to answer some questions about um, growing up with middle cochlear implants. I met you two years ago at the AG Bell conference in Arizona and uh, you made such a great impression on me. Uh, I've been wondering what you've been up to and um, but first uh, let's answer some questions uh, from a group of therapists and parents in Indonesia. Okay, uh, sounds great. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so to begin with, maybe you could give us a short biography of your life. Yeah, yeah, of course. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Linnea Haga. I am 19 years old. I am a bilateral cochlear implant user. I received my first one when I was one and a half. So that one is almost 18 years old. And I received the second one when I was 10. Uh, I attended auditory verbal therapy for a number of years. And so as a result of that and my family's hard work, uh, I was able to enroll in mainstream public schools from the get-go. I am now a college student going to, into my junior year at the University of Central Florida studying animation. Oh, wow. There's a lot to be proud of in that uh, biography, Linnea, but what are you most proud of? Well, I'd say I'm proud of the fact that I was able to mainstream and graduate top of my class. And I'm currently attending, you know, my choice university. Um, I got into UCF's animation program, which only accepts 30 people. So I say that's something that I'm definitely proud of. Uh, I'm basically living my dream right now. You know, I'm doing what I love and that's what I'm proud of. Oh, living your dream. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> Um, what do you think were the most beneficial lessons that your parent taught, parents taught you growing up? I'd say the most beneficial thing my parents did for me was teach me to be a go-getter. And by that, I mean chasing whatever I want to do without seeing my hearing as something that should hold me back. Um, in some cases, it is something that has to be accounted for or accommodated, but they never saw that as something that should be a bad thing or an obstacle. And, you know, they were completely right in that regard. Um, I think that attitude of not treating me as someone who was inherently different because of my hearing is what made me so comfortable and confident with my cochlears today. Um, I, you know, I'm a person with hearing loss. I'm not a hearing loss inflicted person. Oh, that is a really positive attitude. Well done with that. 
Um, what do you remember as being the most challenging moment for you as a person who uses hearing technology? So most challenging moment, I can say there's a particular example that sticks out to me, but I can say the toughest situation to deal with as someone using hearing technology is a scenario where there's crowds and a lot of noise. Uh, for example, I find it more difficult to follow conversations in when I'm with a group of friends at a restaurant, you know, this as an example, because the background noise and the bouncing around of the topics and, you know, the speaker changing so often makes it more difficult to follow. Um, the school cafeteria is something I remember being tough to navigate in that sense, as well as crowds at events like concerts or parties or any of that type of thing. And how do you overcome those challenges at the time? Well, you know, while more difficult, it's definitely not impossible by any means to deal with those types of situations. Um, I deal with it by asking for help. My friends all know about my cochlear implants and they all know that at times I might have to ask them to repeat themselves or, you know, ask the person next to me what was said. Um, it takes two seconds for someone to repeat themselves and all my friends are very understanding of that. So, you know, it's always okay to ask and it's always okay to ask someone to do that because it takes just a little bit and it allows you to stay in the conversation. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with that and I've never run into an issue using that method. Fantastic. So thinking about this group of parents that are going to be watching this in Indonesia, mm -hmm. what messages would you like to address to parents who are currently raising small children using hearing technology? So I'd say the most important thing, number one, is that your child grows up with their hearing technology being a part of them, uh, not something that sets them apart. I don't see my cochlear implants as something that's separate from me. Um, it's just my ears, you know, it's my sense of hearing, just like your ears are just your ears. Um, to achieve this, you really have to make sure you follow your ABT and your surgeon closely. And, you know, that takes a lot of work in the beginning while the child is young. But as they grow up, you definitely see results and you definitely see, you know, the payoff from doing all of that work. And um, it also means not handling them too overbearingly just because they don't have normal hearing. You know, just remember to us, this is just how we hear. You know, there's nothing wrong. Um, we're just as capable as any other child. And it's very important that they know this and they have that confidence going forward. Oh, I really liked that. Um statement you just said this is just how I hear I, I love that comment Good yeah one. um Lene I'm wondering if your mum is nearby um is she available to answer a question she is um she's sitting right next to me uh, I'm oh. going to have to unplug my Roger pen here just give me one second oh can you show us that oh yeah um this is my Roger pen it's like an FM system uh, I like to just use it whenever I'm listening to something on the computer. You know, it's just a replacement for headphones because I can't really use normal headphones. So, you know, it works oh, out so, very well. Um, so then you've been able to hear me very clearly using the FM, the Roger Pen, but your mum hasn't been able to hear me. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, okay. Because it's plugged into the audio jack. <laughs> oh, okay. That's wonderful. Thanks for showing us that. All right, now my mom can hear you and she'll scooch on over. Okay, hi Miriam. Hello, hi Rebecca, how are you? Yeah, great, good to see you again. You too. Um, Linnea has done a great job answering questions from the therapists and parents in Indonesia. Uh, and there's just one question for you. Uh, let's sure. have a look. So, um, what do you think parents of ch children using hearing technology need to understand about raising their children? Oh my, talking to parents. Can I yeah. talk forever? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I just wanted to say congrats for making the decision uh, to get a CI. It opens so many possibilities for your child. And I know it's hard to find out your kid is not hearing, but it's a really good decision. So first of all, I wanted to say congratulations. And second of all, yeah, you have to understand that it takes some training, I would say, for the brain to adjust to all these sounds making no sense in the beginning. So you just can't expect it to be complete regular hearing like anyone else right from the get-go. It does take rehab and training 
and it, it will take a little while before your child will understand words and start speaking and all that. So that first I want them to understand. And then also um, there's something that you have to learn to use, just like you get a new tool and you don't know how to use it. You have it, but you don't know how to use it yet. That's how I kind of compare the CIs to. You get it implanted and you start listening and then you have to learn how to use it. And that's where your brain adjusts to learning to make sense of everything. But I wanted to say um, to remember to have fun with your child. Your kid is like any other kid that wants to just play around and be silly and don't treat them that, like they're made out of glass or any different. They're just kids like anyone else. And I, I always like to... Um, use every moment there was to have an opportunity to speak. So talk a lot to your young children, be silly, play, use any opportunity of the day to get speech in and sing and be silly and just have fun. You know, I would just, for example, go to the grocery store and look at down the aisles and talk about the rice and what shape it has and what color and what you use it for. In the beginning, it won't make sense to your child, but Wow, when they start talking, they will have a lot of vocabulary. <laughs> and I do still remember the very first time Linnea knew her name. That took a little while before she understood that she was Linnea. And you know, the way that she turned around, stopped in her track and just turned around and looked at me when she heard her name for the first time, it, it's amazing. So I would say the possibilities are endless and there's so much hope for your child. Uh, that's wonderful, Miriam. Th very inspiring. And you are a model auditory verbal parent uh, with that description <laughs> of the groceries. I've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, thanks, Miriam and Lene, for answering those questions. Um, I do have one last question from me. Linnea, I'm wondering, oh, is, do you want to plug back the FM or are you happy to share the speaker with your mum? I can share it. It's all good. Okay. All right, good. So you mentioned you are living your dream at the moment, studying animation, but what's your dream job? Well, uh, I am an animation major, so mm -hmm. I plan to graduate with my bachelor's and hopefully go to work in a studio for TV or film. Uh, my school in particular, UCF, has close ties with Disney because it's in Orlando. Uh, so I'd love to be able to utilize those connections in order to land a starting position at Disney Animation Studios. So that would be my dream job. That sounds amazing. And I hope we get to see your name in the credits of a Disney movie in the future. That would be so exciting. That's the dream. Uh, thanks, thanks again, um, Linnea and Miriam. Uh, I'm sure everybody watching in Indonesia will really value hearing about your experience and your suggestions and advice. Um, cochlear implants are fairly recent technology in Indonesia, so it's wonderful for parents there to see what is possible 18 years uh, after uh, their child receives a cochlear implant. It's been uh, really inspirational. Thanks so much. I would uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yes. Okay, let, uh, let me just finish this recording. Mm -hmm. It was great talking to you. So wow, that was a fantastic interview, wasn't it? Yeah, wawancara yang sangat bagus ya tadi. What a lovely way to finish off our webinars to see such an amazing young woman. Yeah, cara yang sangat indah ya untuk mengakhiri webinar ini dari uh, cerita dari wanita muda tadi. I noticed two main things in the video. One was that Linnea's speech was very clear and easy to understand. Ada dua hal yang saya ambil tadi dari video tadi adalah pertama ucapan Linnea sangat jelas but most of all it was so impressive to see her being so full of confidence and so having such a great attitude to her own hearing loss tapi lebih dari itu saya senang melihat uh, bagaimana Linnea begitu percaya diri untuk bercerita Okay, so we're just going to do a little bit more revision of all the strategies that we've talked about over the last six weeks 
mari kita rangkum strategi-strategi yang sudah kita bahas selama tiga seri webinar ini. Do you remember in series one, we talked about um, how we can improve our home for learning? Di seri pertama, kalau masih ingat, bagaimana kita mengkondisikan rumah untuk mendengar dan berbicara. Your child needs their technology on all the time so that they can begin to learn. Anak harus menggunakan dan menyalakan alat pendengarannya sepanjang dia terjaga. We're going to keep the background noise down. We're going to be close to the child. And as Linnea's mother said, we're going to take every chance to talk to them. Jadi kita akan menurunkan segala kebisingan yang ada di sekitar rumah, lalu juga kita mendekat ke anak, dan seperti yang dibilang tadi oleh ibu dari Linnea, kita harus bicara banyak dengan anak. In our second webinar, Dr. Anisha Preto joined us, and we talked a lot about auditory development. Lalu di seri kedua, bergabung bersama kita Dr. Anisha Preto yang menjelaskan perkembangan pendengaran. She showed us the strategies of listening first and the auditory sandwich to start to get that auditory cortex in the brain activated. Jadi beliau menjelaskan tentang strategi pendengaran lebih dahulu dan juga auditory sandwich agar bisa menjadi awal bagi auditory cortex memproses stimulus pendengaran. And then Rebecca showed us how to use auditory hooks and acoustic highlighting to really get the child's listening attention. Lalu Rebecca menjelaskan tentang auditory hook dan juga penonjolan akustik untuk uh, meraih atau menangkap perhatian anak. And in this webinar we focused more on ways to get your child talking. Dan di seri ketiga ini kita lebih fokus kepada anak untuk berbicara. Remember that strategy of wait, wait, wait. We're going to stop to make sure your child has a chance to say something. Kita memberikan strategi tunggu, tunggu, tunggu. Kita memberikan waktu dan kesempatan untuk anak melakukan giliran berbicara. And we had some fun singing happy birthday and using a phrase in Indonesian to show how we can use auditory closure. Lalu tadi juga ada contoh bagaimana kita menyanyikan lagu Happy Birthday, lalu juga beberapa frase dalam bahasa Indonesia untuk mempraktekkan strategi auditory closure. Then Rebecca showed us ways that we can use choice to enhance the child's opportunities to talk. Lalu juga Rebecca menjelaskan strategi gunakan pilihan agar anak bisa mengucapkan apa yang dia inginkan dari pilihan tersebut. And then lastly, she showed us that strategy of expansion and extension, listening to what the child says and adding some more ideas to it. Yeah. Dengan strategi perluasan dan perpanjangan, kita mendengar, kita menyimak apa yang anak ucapkan, lalu tambahkan satu atau dua ide lagi. Now, as we mentioned, here is our email address. I'm going to leave that up for a minute so that you can write it down if you need to. Yeah, seperti yang sudah dibilang tadi, silakan kirim pertanyaan-pertanyaan Anda di email berikut. Silakan dicatat. So please contact us if you have any questions at all about your child's hearing and which devices might be best for your child. Ya, silakan Anda bisa berkonsultasi tentang pendengaran anak Anda dan juga mungkin alat pendengaran apa yang sesuai dengan kebutuhan anak. We welcome questions about your individual child. What is the progress they are making and what can you do to support them further? So don't hesitate to contact us about your child. Anda juga bisa mengajukan pertanyaan tentang kondisi anak Anda, bagaimana perkembangan pendengarannya dan bisa menanyakan hal-hal terkait dengan perkembangan pendengaran anak Anda. And we also encourage you to give us ideas about how we can help you with further webinars in the future. Dan silakan berikan ide-ide topik untuk uh, kita bahas di webinar yang berikutnya.
And so it just remains for us to say thank you so, so much for joining us over the last three webinars. We've really enjoyed our time with you. Um, thanks to our wonderful interpreter, Yana, for all of her help. Jadi senang sekali kita uh, sudah melakukan tiga seri dari webinar ini. Semoga Anda juga menikmatinya. Thanks very much to Eka, who, as we said, is Executive Director of RSI, who's facilitated us doing these webinars for you. Terima kasih. Kami ucapkan kepada Eka, karena selaku dari Direktur Eksekutif RSI Center, sudah memfasilitasi acara ini. Thanks, Rebecca, for showing us so many fun, fun ways to work with the children. Terima kasih, Rebecca, sudah menunjukkan cara-cara yang menyenangkan untuk mempraktekkan strategi. And of course, we thank we thank Andy Iskandar, who is the area manager for Indonesia for Medellin Hair Life, who's allowed us to provide these webinars for you. Juga terima kasih khusus kepada Pak Andi Iskandar selaku manajer area dari Medel dan Hair Life Indonesia yang sudah mengizinkan kami untuk mengadakan acara ini. Rebecca, did you want to say something? Oh, I was just going to say it's been my pleasure to be part of this process. Saya senang sekali bisa menjadi bagian dari proses ini. I've really missed coming to Indonesia and I've really missed my colleagues at RSI and seeing the families. Ya, saya sangat rindu dengan Indonesia, bisa berkunjung ke RSI dan juga bertemu dengan kolega-kolega di RSI dan juga keluarga-keluarga yang ada di Indonesia. So it's been great being able to connect in this way during the time when we haven't been able to travel. Jadi senang sekali kita masih bisa terhubung lewat acara seperti ini. So from me, sampai jumpa lagi. <laughs> okay. Okay, see thanks so much, Rebecca. Thanks to everybody. We hope to see you again sometime soon. Bye-bye. Yeah, sampai Dadah. jumpa lagi. Dadah. Dadah. Terima kasih.